All right, here we go. This is uh, Adrian J. Hogue here with Roy Styles, the Johnny Connect podcast. Roy, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How are yeah, you doing? Yeah, pretty good. I want to ask you, uh, well, at first I see that you're in your workshop. Very nice that you I am. Uh, updated. Looking good. Yes. Give me a view. Give me Thank a view. You. Over to the... Uh, here we go. Look at this. Nice. They're actually in order. Oh, there's That's my wife's amazing. painting. How long will that last? That organization. It's brilliant. Well, as long as nobody but me comes in here. Fair enough. Um, Fair. At least a week. <laughs> yeah, good. Super. <laughs> um, so we've got camp going on. And uh, we've, we've had lots of reports, you know, about uh, the performances of different players. And uh, uh, Batch has put out his, uh, his, his lines, you know, first, second, <laughs> third, fourth lines, which, hey, hey. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, they're not. Anyway, no. what I want to ask you, Roy, is how much do we read in right now to how the players are being deployed during practice, the performances of some of the players during camp so far? How much do you think that's going to actually affect what we're going to see when the puck drops in the first game against Minnesota? Well, first of all, before I, before I answer that question, I want to just point out the uh, exciting jersey selections that you have on your coach. Um, those are amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's can it's 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 interesting. You have Vancouver on your right, you have Canada on your left because Vancouver is Canada's team, and then in the middle oh, is right. the it's vintage. Right. Oh, is it nice? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as the deployment, the fact that the everything has to be expedited, right? So how you're seeing the lines and no, and I just want a big a big shout out to Batch by the way. He has tried to tell people he only puts those lines in order of how they come onto the ice. So in the mm -hmm. they're not in the it's not first line isn't the first one he lists it's the first group that goes out as a line he's very adamant about this Pedersen is no longer on, is not on the third line which people are freaking out anyway but the lines are pretty solid it looks like that Miller Pedersen to Foley they really liked it I am not surprised they went back to it why change something that's not broken uh it was only a few games anyway 10 games maybe so that that made sense. Besser on the second line is a big piece. I think they really want to have that second line. They want Bo Horvat to have a scoring line. They can't just be a checking line. That's why Louis Erickson mm -hmm. does not make sense on that line because a they weren't that um, they weren't as good of a checking line as Pedersen's line was anyway. To be honest, they were starting to fall behind line behind the Pedersen line in my mind. Uh, before that, I would have said yes, that was your checking line you want to put up against the other team's best line. But I think as far as the deployment, I like it. I like what I see. I like the Roussel, Gaudet, Fertanen. I like that idea of the speed. Uh, everything that you're seeing, the way that they're deploying in practice, I think is mimicking a real thing. Um, I love that second line, possibly, possibly with Besser, Pearson, and Horvat. I think they could do something. Uh, Besser has come into camp with purpose. Um, the, the, you know what I was thinking about, and, and the power play lines also looked very similar to how they were before. It's going to be interesting because Travis Green has said they've looked at little things of tweaking. They're not changing whole systems is what he said, but they're, yeah. they're focusing on parts of the systems that were really bad. And so hopefully, uh, to me, that's just him saying, we're not going to change everything, but really we are changing everything. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. But he's just telling the media, no, we're just going to do tweaks. Um, and to be fair, you can't really do a whole system change probably at this point. Uh, the defense pairings I thought had been interesting. I like how they're adding in a young guy in that, as that eighth person. So it was Sautner, I think, yesterday before it's was Bois. I love mm -hmm. Rafferty was up on another day. Um, I think the Rafferty one is a big one because I think uh, they are looking a little bit ahead to next year yep. and the fact that Tanev may not be around. They, mm -hmm. Forget the cap stuff. Uh, that's a whole other other thing but yeah I like I, I think when you look at the lines and you look at the deployment Erickson has always been on the fourth line practicing I'm a little surprised McEwen hasn't been uh, necessarily as much on those lines which might be a little bit of an indicator they're going to go with some experience first um, and I also know it's been said that some people feel Jake for Tannen might not even play the first game because of his defensive liability and and in the scrimmage it's showing uh, unfortunately I, I would argue, and I think you and I talked a bit about this a tiny bit, but whoever came into this little, it's a mini camp, let's be honest what it is, and it's, and it's faster than a, a normal camp would be, but whoever came into this camp, obviously uh, taking care of themselves during the pandemic, uh, is going to be given more rain than other people. Mm -hmm. So if Jay Fertani comes in not as, as in shape as he should be, then he's not going to play. 
Wow. They don't have time to mess around. Yeah. And I mean, Louis looks like he's in beast mode right now. So he, you know, how's, how's the, you know, (laughs) Canucks nation going to erupt into anarchy when uh, Louis Erickson uh, parks JV up in the press box? Who do you think, Roy, who's in the bubble here? Who's, who's really, you know, who's, who's, who's got the potential to be, to be sitting out at this point? Like as far as the rate, like so, I mean, who are the odd men out right now? Possibly. Furland's out. I don't think Furland's going to play. They've already said actually he's not going to play the exhibition game. Hmm. Um, so Sutter right now, yeah. uh, if he can't get back, I mean, I don't know what happened to him. He's unfit to play, as every Sorry. every player's not playing is right. unfit to play. So he he might be one. Um, but it's it's mainly those fourth line guys. Vertanen, I guess, would be the guy. But everyone likes to throw Vertanen under the bus. Uh, and the only person that has not thrown Vertanen under the bus is the coach. Yeah. So until the coach says something about Jake Vertanen, Jake Vertanen's playing. And they, he has an element that they need yeah. to me in the playoffs is that speed, that size, that grit. Uh, when he plays that kind of game, he also scored 18 goals. So we can say all the defensive liabilities and all that stuff. Again, this is practice. And everyone's getting hyped up about Louis Erickson. It's practice. Practice. We could have, so have something to talk about. Um, you know, Jake Vertanen, he's the type uh, type of player, power forward with speed that can shoot, that that, that could be really effective in the playoffs. Uh, it's exciting. Um, we're 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 hyped for the playoffs, and let's let's keep track of uh, let's keep track of camp and keep uh, putting out some videos. So Johnny Canuck podcast, uh, do the subscribe button or whatever below, and throw in some comments if you like uh, if you like our uh, recording studios or not. Uh, if my microphone's too high and Royce is too low haircuts, whatever you want to say, uh, please put in your comments below. Thanks a lot.